Hello everyone and welcome back to another podcast episode. It's your host, Perry XO, or you can call me Tess. Wow, it's been a little bit long time since I published another podcast episode, but like I said that last weekend I couldn't either record or publish a podcast episode due to the fact that firstly I was very busy and had no time whatsoever to record anything. That's why the promised review video for the forget about us thing had no voice audio which I had mainly promised in a way I hadn't fully promised but you know that's why I had no time to record my voice meaning I couldn't record any podcast episode either plus I had work shifts last weekend which meant that I wouldn't have time to upload anything anyway which is fine because I guess I shouldn't really put that pressure on myself to post a podcast episode every weekend if I don't have the time, because some weekends I do work and I have to prioritize that. Anyways, so considering the fact that it's been over a week, almost two, since I posted a podcast episode, I want to give you guys a recap as per usual. Because obviously things have been going on and I've been getting questions about how things are going and instead of replying to multiple DMs, I'd rather just answer it here. So, well, firstly, I am done with all the medical studying stuff because I did do the vocal medical test administration test thingy. And I am still waiting for a call from a nurse that will tell me if I either got the license or not. Um, But they are taking their sweet time probably because they are busy and I'm not the only newly hired person that they have to call. And they probably has a lot of other phone calls that they have to make. So I am just going to be patient and they have all May to call me back and there is no rush for now at least um i've been working as usual been gaining used to that and i've been getting longer shifts which i don't mind because it's fun and i don't mind it at all um because i'm also currently saving up for my driver's license because i obviously couldn't afford that when i was 18 so that's really exciting um other than that spring has started to come along here there hasn't been any snow it was snowing like two three weeks ago up for a little bit but it didn't really stick to the ground but you know april weather here in sweden is quite the mood swings of a weather um But spring is coming along, it's getting hotter outside, I've stopped wearing my winter jacket, which is really nice because that one makes me very overheated. Um, Other than that, I've been up to my usual stuff, I've been feeling quite drained sometimes though, I've been starting to take naps more often, which I've usually been very against in the past, I've not really been a nap girly, I used to hate naps with a passion, but now that I've gotten this job, I tend to take at least one hour nap around the evening, afternoon, depending on when my shift ends, and yeah, which has become a common thing now. Other than that, social media wise, not gonna lie, I've been having one of those dips again where I feel less encouraged about my social media stuff, not for the thing you might think, not when it comes to YouTube. I still very much feel encouraged when it comes to my YouTube stuff and I'm in the process of a project that I will not reveal yet. It's Little Mix related though, that's the only thing that I can reveal for now. Um, But because it has to do a lot of planning involved and stuff like that, I will not reveal anything because I'm still trying to figure things out. Um, But... Yeah, I've been having a a dip and I think it has to do with my Instagram posting because I don't know if it's the algorithm with Instagram or anything, but it's like, you know, when you're usually the type of person that's not really focusing on numbers, but sometimes you see yourself losing followers and that kind of feels like a kick in the stomach. It's like, or I'm not doing enough or what's happening um and that's kind of been the case for my instagram accounts 
Um, only like one or two of them though, not really all of them because I have quite a few because I'm multitasking with my content because I post on different fan pages. I have my I have my Angelic Perry fan page which is for Perry only and my Twitch fan page, my Glee slash multifandom page and my K-pop fan page. And I think it's been doing quite bad for my K-pop fan page and my Twitch fan page in terms of like I can I can see my follower thing go up and then it goes down and then it goes up and it's like mainly on my K-pop fan page I feel the most discouraged because it's stuck on one thing and it's been stuck on 333 followers for like a month and it feels very discouraging considering the fact that I can see the reach and it's reaching about a thousand thirty hundred people but it's not that's what's really you know communicating with my posts and I post very consistently which is quite discouraging I'm gonna be honest with you guys but that's like the only dip thing that I'm experiencing when it comes to my social media and I'm gonna be honest about that because this is my podcast and as promised I am gonna be authentic and honest and open with you guys and yes even me I go through stuff like this with my social media I'm not gonna act like I'm perfect I have moments where I feel discouraged by my follower account too I don't want the thousands or anything like that. I just want people to appreciate my work. That's it. That's pretty much it. So yeah, that's pretty much what's bothering me when it comes to that kind of stuff. Other than that, it's good. Um, So considering the fact that I was struggling to pick a specific topic to talk about in this podcast episode, I went with doing something a little bit more laid back and still Little Mix related because I still want to talk a lot about... Little mix on this podcast after all. So I say we go straight into the topic of this podcast episode. So because I said this is a little bit laid back, I decided that in today's episode I will be reading random Little Mix opinions that has been posted on Twitter. And I found this tweet that has all shit loads of quote tweets by people from way back to 2021 and I don't care that some of them are old it's still very fun to read and I will not be reading all of them obviously I will read the ones that stand out the most to me or seem the most interesting and I will be responding to them whether I agree or not which is a fun thing to do because you guys can if you're watching this on YouTube you can respond in the comment section if you're listening to this on Spotify it's a little bit harder but you can still like you know go over to YouTube and say your things there but because i couldn't really pick a specific topic in this episode i'm just gonna be chill and go through some fun opinions about little mix so let's get started again i just want to put out the disclaimer that none of these opinions are mine these are posted by other people these are quote tweets under a tweet that asks you to break your silence with little mix mixers opinions in the quotes so this is on twitter or slash x whatever you want to call the damn app so let's get started with this so the first one that pops up here is breathe is utter shit sorry not sorry and actually i have to agree because when it comes to confetti skips breathe is like the one that i don't really like and nothing but my feelings those two are not really on my liking list i think i would have liked breathe more if it didn't include the shouting in the beginning and the church noises because that's really really random and plus it bugged the hell out of me when people were you know theorizing if that was harry styles in the beginning like come on the next one that i found here reads confetti era isn't their best but it sure is the most memorable for a lot of reasons and i agree It wasn't their best, but it certainly was very entertaining for quite a while when they were still a four because of the quarantine content that we received. And it was quite interesting because we got Sweet Melody, we got the confetti sound, and it was just a very mishmash of sounds we got put together in an album. But when it comes to the era itself, yet it was quite messy, and I think that's why it was memorable, to be honest with you guys. A lot of people complain about the Little Mix streams but don't stream and if this is not one of the most true things ever, like this is the thing even with the girls solo music. 
Y'all complain all the damn time about everything, a little thing that you don't like, but you don't support the girls or them as soloists. Like, maybe use your energy for complaining and put that into streaming. I, personally, am not a big fan of the streaming culture because it has sabotaged a lot of artists out there that are very, very talented. And mainly for Little Mix, I think if the streaming culture wasn't so big, maybe they would have been a lot more successful than they already were. And for them as soloists, the streaming culture is ruining them. Because when the focus is more more put on the streaming numbers than appreciating the songs that they put out, it's gonna ruin their damn careers. In a way, not fully, but it ruins the entertainment purpose of the whole thing. So I disagree to agree with this because yes, you should put your mind into supporting them rather than complaining. But then again, I think the streaming culture is very fucked up because it's ruining a lot. And that's just my personal opinion. So I'm agreeing slash disagreeing with this because again, this stupid focus on the streaming, I don't get it. But that's probably because i am been around for a while, if you say so. Uh, That made me sound very old. I'm only 24, but you get what I mean. It was different, okay? Bounce Back really could have broken them in the US, sigh. And I disagree, because this was also very late in their careers, and they had already missed their opportunity to break the US. I think they have the opportunity to break the US back when... Well, what can I say? Back when it was the DNA slash salute era around there they had their opportunity and then for a short while during the get weird era too and obviously again during the glory days era but after that i think the opportunity was quite missing i think because i know that their collab with Nicki minaj did get a lot of attention but it was short span attention i don't think bounce back would have broken the us i'm sorry The next one says, They really need to stop making songs about being heartbroken and make music personal to them, like releasing breakup song when two have been in long-term relationships and are now expecting kids. This was posted around the time that two of them were pregnant. And I actually agree. On one side, I do love when Little Mix made heartbreak songs, but it started to get too many of them. Like when they were releasing Trash and Cut You Off and No. And it's like even Heartbreak Anthem, like all of those had a heartbreak message behind them and it got kind of repetitive. So I very much agree on that one. The next one reads, The fandom is way too focused on hating on Jessie. It's a creepy obsession. So, I agree with this one. Because there is a difference to holding somebody accountable for something versus being full on a bully. You can dislike somebody without insulting their appearance and the person that they are. If you don't like somebody, you block them. And you ignore their existence. That's how you do it. You don't obsess over them. That's just my personal opinion. And I stand by that. And I've been standing by that for years since this whole hate train begun. And I think it's unnecessary for people to spend their free time when they could have put that time on supporting their favorite instead. But they focus on hating on Jessie who is not even gonna see these people hating on her anyway. Like, give up already, like, come on. Be serious right now. This one is quite funny, actually, because I've been saying this for years, and it reads, Girlies need to stop pleasing the moms and the kids. The kids ain't their responsibility. Go swear in your songs. Most of us are adults anyway. Once you think about conforming to what the others want, it kind of ruins the art. And that's so true. Like, oh my goodness gracious. Like... For many years, I've been so frustrated at the fact that these girls never said, like, barely any swear words in their songs. Like, I don't want you to say, fuck, shit, piss, cunt, and everything in your songs, like, on and on and on. But I don't mind you saying fuck or something, because, like, in their freaking Not A Pop song, 
song, like that track, it was a shade song against Psycho and Simon Cowell. But it kind of ruined it when they sing about not wanting to sing bubblegum pop and be childish and all that stuff. But you say I don't give a what. It's supposed to be I don't give a fuck. Like, come on girls, you were pushing your 30s around this time when you sang that stuff. Sing for the adults, not the kids. Because if I am not wrong, from around the time when I became a mixer, which was early 2013... All of us were teenagers to kids, but that's also around the time when their music were also a lot more younger, if you think about it. Like, it was the DNA era and Salute era. It was not really adult-like in that sense, but as time went on, all of us grew older and so did the whole fandom. Like, there is plenty of us who are in our 20s now. Some are in their late teens, some are in their younger teens, but they are also newer fans. But most of us who have been around for years are adults now, and we have jobs, some even have kids, are married. It's like, really weird that they... I don't think it was the girls, I think it was the label that were pleasing the moms for not wanting to say a little swear word in a song, but it was getting too much and it really irritated me, so I agree with this opinion. Next one reads, you can tell the girls have more creative fa f fandom, creative freedom without Jessie there. Jessie was holding them back from pursuing out-of-the-box ideas, I said what I said. And I can't agree to disagree with this one because the only thing I can agree that Jessie probably held them back is probably when it came to picking outfits that they maybe had to match each other with. But other than that, when it comes to creative freedom... I don't think she really held them back. I think that's a stupid narrative that people came up with just to put some type of blame on her for making a little mix worse than it was. Y'all ever considered that a lot of the things that were bad with Little Mix were on the label? Sometimes, you know, like for an example, let's push it back to a couple of years ago when they had to do their own makeup instead of having actual makeup artists do their makeup for them because they couldn't afford it. Yeah, no, that was not that was not really Jessie's fault, right? But you're gonna blame her too on that one. I'm just saying. It's like I get it. You probably think so because she said she was very insecure. But this is the thing. You say this probably out of pure anger against her. But do you realize how harmful this is to other people who feel insecurities? You who wrote this probably has it too, but it's a very harm harmful thing to say because it's like, oh, you are insecure. You're holding your friends back from having a good life. Like, Jesus Christ, it's not that deep. And even if she were holding them back in some way, I think the girls respected her. I don't think they did a big sigh of relief when she left when it came to that stuff you are being way too dramatic so that's a big disagree to be honest the next one reads lightning had so much potential and she was that bitch poor queen poor queen carried get weird on her shoulders and that's so true oh my goodness that song deserved to be a single and i don't know why they picked freaking, what, Black Magic as their single, but Lightning was right there. They had potential to make a part two of DNA, or another dark mix concept. That's unforgivable, but I agree with you, who wrote this. The next one reads, unpopular opinion, but I think the Erasure of the fourth Little Mix member is so wrong. She did her time, she contributed to the group, stop editing her out. Facts. To be honest, I am glad that somebody is pointing that out because the pettiness when it comes to editing Jessie out has been getting on my nerves for years again. I took part of it back when I tr pretended to be an OT3 only stand, but you get it? Like, the whole thing with trying to erase her from history is so childish. I don't care if you dislike her. She contributed to the band. You can't listen to most of the discography from Little Mix without hearing her voice. So, yeah, you see, I agree with that opinion a lot. Confetti featuring Saweetie was the greatest single and deserved attention like Black Magic and Shout Out to My Ex. 
and to be honest, it wasn't the greatest single, but it does deserve that amount of attention, to be honest. I agree with that one. Not that it was the best single, but that it deserved the same attention, because it was a bop, and even if I'm an OD4 stan, I preferred that version of Confetti over the OD4 version, because the one with Saweetie featured has a lot more party vibe, if you get what I mean. It feels more full and completed. Monster in Me is way better than Love Me or Leave Me, and it should have gotten a live performance. I agree. As much as I love Love Me or Leave Me, I prefer Monster in Me because it feels more deep. It feels like it hits your heart more, and it definitely deserved a live performance on the confetti tour at least. But what did we get? Reggaeton Lento. No time for tears. They could have replaced those with freaking Monster and Me, and that's again unforgivable. The next one reads, We deserved a full OT3 album instead of just a few songs. I love the idea of the Greatest Hits album, but we needed one last album before the hiatus. And I agree. I did make a video regarding this, and I did mention the same thing, that I feel like we deserved a lot more in the Between Us era than we got, and that it was a big lackluster in terms of celebrating 10 years. I think we deserved a full album from the three of them, because... For the people preferring just trio mix, I think it was it would be an, been a fair thing to give them some content too, because that's probably also a reason why they're editing Jesse out because they would want more OD3 content, but we didn't get that, and let alone a full album. It would have been interesting, but I think due to the fact that they were running out of ideas, they had no time, and one or two of them wanted to really go solo or something like that. They were just done, and I think it was out of the question, but it would have been a big slay to see them release a full album as a three, because even I, who loves the four of them, but also the three of them together, I don't- I have a preference, but I don't mind the idea of a full length, like, OD3 album, because I would have wanted it too, and I said so, so I agree with that one. The next one here reads, Think About Us could have been one of their biggest hits, and yes, finally another Think About Us then. It's so rare to find y'all, like, where the hell are you hiding? Think About Us is personally my favorite song on the LM5 album. I've been loving that one, especially with the feature. And yes, it had potential to be one of their biggest singles and biggest hits. But guess what? Black Magic is apparently a lot more appealing to the public, it seems. But I agree with this one, because Think About Us deserved a lot better. Especially the one with the feature, because that one is a banger. Oh my goodness, I keep finding opinions here that are so slay, like this one. The amount of disrespect that Love Sweet Love gets is insane. It's an amazing single. And preach, girl. That's true, because Love Sweet Love is one of my favorite tracks from the Between Us era as a whole. That one has a very slay message, and I really love that it kind of sounds like a sibling to Mr. Loverboy, because the instrumental is quite similar. Um, that reminds me, I should maybe make a mashup of those songs. Hmm? Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, but for real though, like, Love Sweet Love deserved a lot more, and it didn't deserve the hate that it received. I remember when it was released, people didn't like it that much, or were uh, really, like, appreciating it that much, but that one is the best song from the Between Us era. You can't prove me wrong. This one says, people love to discredit Perry's contribution to the group, but it's in part thanks to the group lasted that long. As long. She could have gone solo when they were at their peak and easily benefit from it, but she is loyal to Little Mix, something mixers like to deny when a topic comes up. I agree. And I don't say this only because she's my favorite member that I like, you know, follow solo wise, but it's true. I think the whole focus that people put on Leanne and Jade being the writers of Little Mix, they love to discredit Perry. And also when they start to involve the race cards in this, just because she is white and blonde, you know, like they love to discredit her. All the time. It's like they don't think that she was an important part of Little Mix. Like, come on, are you for real now? Would Little Mix have lasted if she left the group? I mean, Jesse left and it didn't last anyway, but you see what I mean? It's like, I think 
that she had a very big contribution to the group because she also was the face of the group. If she left, the attention would have left with her, I think, to be honest. And that's no hate to the other girls. I'm just saying that the way people disrespect her and her contribution to the group is insane. And people still do that till this day, let me tell you. It's insane. And some of these people, I will not name any names, but these people are... Either like standing Jade or Leanne alone or both, but not Perry. They can stand whoever they want. But the thing is, they love to be loud about discre discrediting, discrediting Perry with her time in the group and her contribution to the band. But love to use her for the streams, to decride her streaming numbers, to lift up their favorites. It's like, what do you want? Do you appreciate her? Or do you just use her for clicks? It's like, come on now, be so for real. I 100% agree with this one. I'm very passionate about this because I'm so tired of this whole fucking fucked up narrative that she didn't have any important contribution to the band. And I know this is not all people, but I've seen my fair share of people saying those stuff that, oh, she didn't do anything, she didn't write anything. She did write not as much, but she was an important part of Linamix said I, what I said. The next one reads, Heartbreak Anthem really is meh. Overhyped and it wasn't that great like y'all made it look like. And I agree. It's a bop. I really like Heartbreak Anthem. It feels kind of nostalgic in some ways, but it wasn't all that. So I agree. The next one says, Little Mix did not know how to make a set list like at all. And yes, I think this was actually on Little Mix themselves, the girls, for picking their songs and whoever were making the choices in the end, you need to shake your brain. No, I'm kidding. But it's like, as for the last set list that they have, it was better than some of them, but come on now. You could have done a lot better. The set list usually sucked and that's sad. The next one reads, they should have waited after the release of album 5 to leave Psycho. The album would have been huge. I understand that they had to leave. It's just that the timing was horrendous. And I actually agree. As much as I hated that label with a passion, they should have waited a little bit more until they left. Because that ruined the whole potential of album 5 becoming huge. If they would have promoted it right, I don't think so. But you know what I mean. The next one reads, Happiness and not a pop song should have never been in a million years being released as singles. They're cute, but it should have been rendezvous, 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 and a mess, a hap, wait, what, a mess, yeah, sorry, my brain had a brain fart, but yes, rendezvous and a mess should have been singles instead of those two, because, hap well, happiness is quite a lot of a bop, but not a pop song, mm-mm. The next one says, My Love Won't Let You Down is their worst ballad. No, it's not their worst ballad. Their worst ballad is Breathe. I'm sorry, guys. But that's just my opinion. But I disagree. The next one reads, Confetti is their worst album. It's the only album that lacks their essence, such as acapella moments. The girls even knew this when it came to promoting the album, saying that they were just having fun in the studio and nothing more. This is what I think was the big flaw with Confetti. As much as I love some tracks on there, because I have my top three, um, especially Sweet Melody is my all-time favorite Little Mix song. I'm never going to change that, probably. But when it comes to the whole Confetti album as a whole, it was a big mess in terms of how the songs were matching each other, because they weren't, because apparently it seemed like they were just having fun. I think... This being their last studio album that wasn't a greatest hits album and their last one as a four, they should have done a lot more planning, but whatever was happening, you know, we got what we got. This one says, them giving their last tour to the UK only was a slap in the face and I'm still pissed at them. Yes, I know the babies, but still. I agree. I think I said this in one of my videos, my commentary videos maybe. But I agree, If I think they had to stick to the UK because of budget, but also because it was still sort of a pandemic going on. Like it was 
Well, it was 2022, it wasn't declared a pandemic anymore, but I think due to the fact that they had their babies with them on tour, I think for health reasons they weren't able to. But I can agree with you either way if we ignore the fact that they had babies. If Let's say they didn't have their babies and were not mothers. My opinion would have been a lot more different in terms of like why give the UK everything. Especially the last tour. I agree. And I know this is why some people from like the international part of the Mixer fandom travel there to see them live. But it's like I agree to disagree with this one actually. Because I can understand from the health perspective that they couldn't and I understand that but I agree with the whole thing that it feels unfair because as somebody who's been a long-term mixer and never seen them live I get you and it sucks Sweet Melody should have been the lead single for Confetti and I agree because even though it still exploded and became their best song from that album I think it would have grabbed even more attention from the public if it was released first but then again I think that if it did we wouldn't have gotten a good music video so I disagree to agree with that one this is a controversial one this one reads they should have been a trio from the start and I disagree and this is not because I have a preference this is because the judges didn't want them to be a three um, and it would have been a lot different, maybe. We don't know that. I think this is a subjective matter, but I'm gonna say I disagree. And that's no hate against the trio. I just prefer them as a four. But again, if they did debut as a trio when the X Factor went on, I wouldn't have known any different. But now that we know different thing, like now that I know differently, I disagree. I don't know if this is only me, but I find this one kind of funny. And this opinion reads, It felt like in the confetti era they had already broken up, they didn't really put any effort in. And that's kind of ironic, that f considering the fact that they were already planning on going their separate ways around this time. So that could probably be why, but I sort of actually agree, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I think this opinion is quite cute coming from somebody who doesn't even like Jessie, but this one says As much as Jessie annoys me now, her head voice and vibrato and, all, and her low notes were so heavenly. Her whisper singing had me in tears every time. And it actually warms my heart to see people who even dislike her can appreciate her and that shows a lot of maturity. But I, I agree with you. I don't feel annoyed by her, but like I agree that her voice is heaven. So, yeah. This one reads, Beep Beep is a fucking banger. It's corny and silly, but it's not meant to be taken seriously. And I hard agree with this one. Beep Beep is actually such a bop and it's funny and it makes you boppy. And yeah, it's not meant to be taken seriously. So I agree. I've got one more here to read before we wrap up this episode as it's going to be shorter than my other ones because I really want to do more parts to this. So the last one says, the music video for No was their worst one. I really disliked it and I agree. In a way, I, I don't really hate the music video so like the girls looked stunning but it was quite messy in terms of concept because when they were first discussing what no meant it felt more like it was contributing to a concept of saying no to a label or like higher up people you know try to control you and you want to say no but instead it was about being a sort of a maid to your man while that also works it felt like a little mess when it came to the music video because the outfits were a mess, the makeup was a mess. I think they could have pulled off a different concept maybe or just not done a music video at all for that song. They could have made a music video for Trash maybe or just not done another one. Easy as that. I think they did too much there and I agree that that one is like one of their... Next to Breakup Song music video and No One 
or their worst music videos to be honest so I agree however like I said I want to do a second part of this with reading opinions on Twitter with Little Mix and maybe even K-pop but like this one is about Little Mix right so I was thinking that this is a part one and that I might do a part two of reading random Little Mix opinions on Twitter another time and that I'm cutting this episode short because well, I don't want to read them all, and I have collected some, and I want to save some for part two. So, what do you think of these Little Mix opinions? And do you want me to bring back my series, Mixers Unpopular Little Mix Opinions, on my channel? You can send me a request about a topic that you want me to talk about on my podcast in my DMs on Instagram or comment down below if you're listening to this on YouTube. If you're listening to this on Spotify, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. And I hope you all have a good rest of your day or night, whatever the time is for you. And I will see you in the next podcast episode.